Welcome adventurers, what's going on guys? My name is Cody, this is Taking 20, a channel about all things role-playing games. And today I thought I would do something a little bit different. And uh, we're going to take a look at the differences between Roll20 versus Fantasy Grounds. And uh, what I want to do is I want to compare a little bit on the features. I think most people kind of understand the features, so I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to go into crazy depth all the difference there but very specifically i want to talk about the pricing differences as well specifically for dungeons and dragons 5e so if you're playing dungeons and dragons fifth edition this video will help you kind of compare the pricing for each of these two platforms for very specific kind of uh, scenarios that i've come up with and how you might be using each of these that way in some cases roll 20 might be your better option and in other cases uh, it'll be Fantasy Grounds, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So, before I can jump in and talk about this stuff, I have to give a complete disclosure. I'd like to give a complete disclosure to you guys on what my working relationship is with each of these companies, because I do have a working relationship with each of these companies. So, for Roll20, right now, I am a content creator on Roll20. You can go to Roll20 and buy a module that we made. Uh, I will make money off of that, uh, so I have a vested interest there. I also have worked with Roll20 in the past. Uh, I am one of the, I was at the time uh, that I was using Roll20 really, really heavily, uh, probably one of the, the most intensive users, and you guys can kind of see that here a little bit. I'm a marketplace creator, and uh, so I actually, Roll20 actually hired me to help convert content from the Adventure Week stuff into their platform. Uh, for their distributor so they could distribute it and, and sell that so I have been paid by roll 20 to do those things in addition right now fantasy grounds is a sponsor for save or dice uh, if you guys don't know what save or dice is it's a weekly dungeons and dragons 5e show that uh, I put on with webdm nerdarchy and encounter roleplay at the moment uh, last season we, we had a little bit of different cast but fantasy grounds is a sponsor for that so they pay me uh, as a sponsor to advertise for them in that capacity. In addition, when I hit 10,000 subs, I reached out to Doug over at Fantasy Grounds and said, hey, I'd like to do a giveaway. Would you guys consider maybe giving away some keys for Fantasy Grounds uh, for my channel? And they said, absolutely, here are some keys for you for your giveaway. So there you go. There is my full working relationship with each of these companies. I do, do have a vested interest in each of them. And I thought it was only fair to kind of disclose that to you guys before I kind of go in and compare each of these. So take with whatever I say with a grain of salt or don't. There you go. Okay, guys. So let's uh, take a quick look at some of the features that each of these different platforms offer. So let's start off by looking at Roll20. Roll20 has three different subscription levels. They have the free base account. They have a plus account, which is typically $5 a month. And then they have a pro account which is typically $10 a month. So the biggest jump that you're going to get when you go from the base account to the plus account is honestly, it's going to be dynamic lighting. Okay. Now this is kind of an interesting feature. It's kind of a cool feature. It also takes some time to implement, but this is a feature that fantasy grounds right now, very late in 2017 and going into 2018 does not have. Uh, I know that they are working on their unity engine, but that is a feature that only roll 20 has if you guys have seen dynamic lighting, it's 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 cool. It's very interesting. Uh, since I have been using Fantasy Grounds, I don't particularly miss it. But a lot of people think that there's a lot of value in that particular feature. So it is absolutely worth mentioning that you do get that at the Plus account. In addition to that, you get access to uh, basically being able to take your characters from one game to another. Uh, you, you have to have somebody that has a Plus account. In order to do that, if you're a free user, you can do that if you are in somebody else's game that already has a plus account. And by the way, I should mention that all of these levels, you can run games. You can run as many games as you want. And you can see that here with their unlimited games played. If you are a plus level subscriber, only the dungeon master or game master has to be on this level to unlock all of these features for everyone in their game, even if their players are still on the base account. And the same thing works for the pro account. So jumping from the plus account to the pro account, and this is the account that is going to be most identical to the features that Fantasy Grounds offers. 
So when you jump from the Plus account to the Pro account, you gain the access to the API. And I'll, uh, an abbreviation of what that is, is basically it gives you these extra little add-ons that you can go and hunt down online and drop them into your game. And usually they adapt your game in the form of animations and automations. So if you want to, you know, they have all kinds of trackers and stuff like that. So you can like track your arrows. They have some that will move the lighting and kind of flicker it a little bit on the dynamic lighting. They have stuff, uh, all kinds of initiative macros where you can throw everybody in initiative with one click. Uh, and that is, in essence, what the biggest jump is and the biggest addition that you're going to get here with the pro account. Um, I, and I will say, once again, that this is by far and away the the biggest thing that you're going to have. This, this is the closest thing that you're going to find to the features offered in Fantasy Grounds. Now, one thing else to, to keep in mind with Roll20 is that Roll20 also has integrated video and voice, uh, something that Fantasy Grounds does not. Uh, actually, I think Fantasy Grounds may have voice. I, honestly, I'm, I'm just not certain off the top of my head. Uh, but most people will be using Discord or they'll be using uh, Skype, and I'll explain why. Even though this has integrated uh, video and voice, a lot of the assets that you have to load in, specifically with Storm King's Thunder and with the new Tomb of an Annihilation, they are so big and they're so resource heavy on the server that uh, there's a lot of lag issues being caused there. So in a custom homebrew game where you're kind of making one page, two page, one map, two map, and you're creating your handouts, it's not as big of an issue. You have integrated video and chat right there. But if you're playing any of the fancy modules, then that's where you're going to start to run into a lot of resource issues. Uh, I can speak very firsthanded that Tome of Annihilation has major issues where you basically are forced to not use Roll20's video chat. And uh, you can even see this at the end of the Storm King's Thunder campaign that I ran on Roll20 here on my channel. Uh, towards the later sessions, it, it was really, really, really bogged down. We couldn't get a lot accomplished, and I had to stop and load and reload in the middle of game sessions a lot, uh, just because of how uh, how resource heavy those maps, those huge big maps for Storm King's Thunder were. Uh, something else, Roll20 is online. This is both a plus and a con, uh, a pro and a con. Obviously, being able to just log in online, it's browser-based, boom, that can be convenient at times. But other times, we've had issues where we're ready to play and the server goes down or the server has a hiccup or maybe Roll20 is going through maintenance. Uh, so those are few and far between. It's very fair to Roll20 to mention that those are rare, but they do happen. Uh, so that is something to consider there. Okay, for Fantasy Grounds. Now, Fantasy Grounds, the biggest plus that they're going to have is easy. It's just easy as far as setting things up. You can just jump in and play right from the get-go. Now, a major con for Roll20 versus Fantasy Grounds is that, in my opinion, Roll20 has a much better UI. It, is a, it has a lower uh, learning curve to, to kind of get in and start getting games going. Now, I will also mention that it has a lower learning curve at the free level. It is not any easier to say that Roll20 is easier to learn with their macros and their API than just learning how to use Fantasy Grounds UI. I don't think that that's fair to say. I think that Roll20 at the base level, if you just want basic stuff, much easier to jump in and gain. Fantasy Grounds, it's got a longer learning curve. It was really, really frustrating for me uh, to kind of understand how to use it. And now that I've spent the time, it's like, okay, it's not a big deal. Uh, and it actually has a lot more automation uh, and it, it just a lot less time. I'm going to show you guys something here. On my uh, on my profile page, you can see all these little badges and achievement stuff. I've got almost 2,000 hours uh, logged on Roll20. Almost 2,000 hours logged on Roll20. And I will tell you right now, 70% of those hours was me just bored, not, not in the middle of a game, but logging in to set up macros and to set up automation and to set up a, a player's handbook, which I have built into Roll20. If you guys, by the way, want to learn more about that, I have a whole Rule 20 Master Series where I cover all this stuff. Uh, but yeah, almost 2,000 hours, tons of badges and achievements. And looking back, 
it was it didn't it doesn't bother me like i don't feel like that that was time wasted because i enjoyed just the like kind of learning how to do it just the challenge of it not everybody feels like that a lot of people their time is very valuable and that's going to be a major plus for fantasy grounds you get in everything is set up everything is ready to go learn the ui and you're good to go uh, so definitely a major plus on Fantasy Grounds when you start looking at these plus accounts for macros and pro accounts for APIs. Now something else that I want to give a, a check mark over here to Roll20. In my opinion, it's much easier to set up maps. It just is. Uh, the, the way that the maps work and the way that the maps can be built on Roll20, it's a little bit nicer. Now I want to throw a caveat in this. I no longer build maps in Roll20 when I do have to use it. Nor do I build maps in Fantasy Grounds. What I build them all in is I build them in Dungeon Painter Studio. You guys know they've sponsored the channel before. I'm a huge believer in their, their product. Uh, the marketplace for Roll20 has maps, all these sorts of little map packs, and you can get these little chunks and tiles and put together maps or find completed maps. And typically those things run about $6, $5.99, $6.99, right in that range. Uh, Dungeon Painter Studio is 15 bucks. And you can build infinite maps very, very quickly. Uh, and it's drag and drop and export your map, load it into Roll20, load it into Fantasy Ground. So for me, personally, for me, that's a wash. If you want to just build in Roll20 or just build into Fantasy Grounds, 100% Roll20 has the advantage there. Uh, again, for me, it, it doesn't matter because I don't use either one of these anyways. So um, for the Fantasy Grounds... Uh, features for the ultimate so they basically have, they have the demo for you to check out fantasy grounds and kind of get used to the ai you can't really save your campaigns it is just a demo uh, so don't think that you can get by with just a demo uh, you'll probably be a little frustrated there now the standard so basically everybody in your game has to either have a standard license or the single dungeon master or game master can have an ultimate license just like on roll 20 so you can use the demo version if you're playing in a game for somebody on the ultimate package so in essence when we're doing our comparisons here in just a moment we're not going to talk about having everybody have to have standard licenses they don't uh, they just don't now one thing that people do not know about is they do not know that fantasy grounds offers subscription pricing so let's take a look here obviously you have roll 20s free you have roll 20 on the uh, on the plus there's two different options here. You can have the $4.99 per month, it's $5 sub a month, 60 bucks a year. Or if you want to save a little bit of money for the year, you can just pay it all at one time. It's 50 bucks. Now, uh, the Pro has the exact same thing. It's it's You can't see it here because I'm a, I'm a lifetime free user. Uh, and uh, so this is no, normally $10 a month. This is normally $9.99 a month right there. Or, so 120 bucks a year, or you can just pay it all up front for 100 bucks a year. Now, on the ultimate, you for Fantasy Grounds, you have a $4 a month subscription here. So if you had everybody on the standard or you wanted to use this, let's say you wanted to use this, I don't know, for your home game for some reason, uh, like, like an actual home game to project or anything like that. I would actually say, by the way, if you're just going to do that to use Roll20. But if for some reason, if you wanted it, you could have the standard license. And then just like the $9.99 a month, uh, pro level, you have a $9.99 a month ultimate level here. This works for everybody. It, has, it comes with everything. Everything is, is built in. It's smooth. It's ready to go. Now, also, something to mention is that you can buy these outright. And you can see the pricing here. So if I just wanted to buy a standard license for forever and not pay $4 a month, it's just 40 bucks, and you're done. Uh, you can, and by the way, if you want to just buy the standard license and then eventually end up upgrading it to the ultimate license, you can do that later, which is really, really nice of them, I think. Uh, or you can just 100% just snag the ultimate license. It's $150 one time. It's yours for forever. As many people as you want can join the game. Uh, nice and easy. One more caveat to the ultimate pricing here is that Fantasy Grounds is integrated with Steam and very often they have sales. So I believe, and don't quote me on this, I believe that the Steam sale price uh, just a few weeks ago for the uh, the winter Steam sale, I think was like $115 just for the ultimate license outright. Uh, it might have been 110 or 105 or 120, but it was pretty close to that. Uh, and the same goes for all of the modules, which is what we're about to jump into here 
uh, to start taking a look at because when you start looking at using Roll20 for free versus using an ultimate license of Fantasy Grounds, yes, it's a big difference. But when you start to look at some of the features that are offered uh, in Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds, and then when you start adding in the biggest difference here is Roll20's pricing on their modules is astronomical, in my opinion, uh, compared to Fantasy Grounds. It's almost 200% to the price that uh, Fantasy Grounds is charging, and in some cases it is 200% of the price that Fantasy Grounds charges. So let's jump in and take a look at the modules. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the the modules that, you, that we have here. As we can see, both Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds is offering officially licensed products from Wizards of the Coast. Originally, Fantasy Grounds, for those of you guys who don't know, was the only distributor, online distributor, to offer, uh, to be officially licensed by Wizards of the Coast to offer these, these modules. Now Roll20 uh, is able to offer that stuff. And Roll20 has been playing a little bit of catch up here. And they're even going back and in including some of the old products that uh, came out before they got their license. So if you want to go back and play uh, Tyranny of Dragons, if you want to go back and play Curse of Strahd, you can do all those things. Uh, and so one of the biggest differences that you're going to see here between these two companies is the pricing on these modules. So I know Fantasy Ground seems really, really expensive at first, but if you're playing any of these official things like Tome of Annihilation, for instance, uh, you start to see a pretty big difference. So if we look over here at Tome of Annihilation, we can see that... Roll20 is charging basically the full MSRP. They're charging the full price of an actual physical hard copy book of Tome of Annihilation. Then when we come over here and we look at Fantasy Grounds, we can see that Fantasy Grounds has this exact same product for literally half the price. Uh, for 50% of what Roll20 is charging for 25 bucks. And to me, this is a pretty significant difference. And it's like this across the entire board. If we look at Curse of Strahd, we can see that uh, Roll20 is offering this for for uh, for fifty dollars, and then again, once again, Curse of Strahd over here for Fantasy Grounds twenty five dollars. Now, in addition to that, Fantasy Grounds has some additional products that Roll20 does not have. So when we start looking at things like like the Dungeon Master Guide and all of the core classes, these are available for purchase here on Fantasy Grounds, and Roll20 does not offer them. Now, Roll20 has these, these new uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5e sheets that work a lot with the Compendium. Now, the Compendium is basically the SRD that uh, Wizards of the Coast released for 5th edition. It does not include everything. It does include a lot. It includes, includes quite a few monsters. It includes uh, a few of the core classes, not a lot of the core classes. I think like four Three, three of the core classes. Uh, I know Fighter's in there. I, I don't think uh, Fighter's in there. Maybe Wizard is in there. I don't think that it has like Sorcerer. It doesn't have Bard. It doesn't have, uh, I don't think it has, I don't think it has Monks or Rangers. Like there's a whole bunch missing. Uh, but as far as the basic rules, it does have some of that stuff built in as well for condition. You can look up conditions. You can look up a lot of the spells. Again, not all the spells. So uh, for example, Fireball is in the SRD. Uh, Bigsby's is not. Uh, just as a, a little bit of an example so you guys can see it does include a lot but not everything uh, with fantasy grounds you can pick up 100 percent of everything everything that, that wizards of the coast has released it's on fantasy grounds that's true for the core class all the core classes all of the the core rule book not on rule 20 all of the dungeon master guide all of the dungeon master guide uh, rollable tables the loot tables the magic items all that stuff, 100% of that from the DMG is built in. It's not over here. Uh, I believe the Skag is in here. The Sword Coast Adventures Guide is on Fantasy Grounds. It's not on Roll20 at the time of filming this. And most importantly for a lot of you guys here is Xanathar. Xanathar's all of the classes. Everything from this book is in Fantasy Grounds. Uh, it is not available yet anyways. Uh, no, None of that type of product is available on Roll20. So let's take a look at the pricing. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to throw some spreadsheets at you guys. I want you to follow along with me here. We're going to take a look at a few different specific examples to see, depending on what you guys are interested, how you're interested in using this product, in what it is capable of, and what you will pay for 
those particular packages in those particular scenarios. So here we go. Okay, guys, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at a few different uh, things. We're not on this page looking at subscriptions, okay? We're not looking at any subscription costs or the cost to buy Fantasy Grounds outright. We're just looking at the modules. So as you can see here, these are all of the modules that are offered right now as of filming this video in both Fantasy Grounds and Roll20. So you, if you did nothing else and you just looked at what it costs to buy these particular products, in Fantasy Grounds versus Roll20, that's what these two prices are. So you can see everything offered that Roll20 offers is $369.64 with a caveat of one thing. There's one particular item that Roll20 offers that I did not include in this, and that is they have like a $30 or I want to say $30 map pack available for Curse of Strahd in addition to the $50 already. So if you want to pay $80 for Curse of Strahd, on roll 20 you can do that uh, but I did not include that map pack because it, it's something that it's not really it's kind of from Wizards but not really from Wizards it's something that they kind of put together themselves so uh, that's a pretty significant price difference there uh, you know you're looking at what to uh, 150 bucks hundred and forty dollars uh, eyeball on that hundred forty five dollars and um, that's a pretty significant price difference as you as you guys can remember the price for the Fantasy Grounds Ultimate License, not on sale, is $150, right? It's $149. So that right there, just subscriptions aside, is going to show you that there's a pretty significant price difference between Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds. So if you guys are playing all the adventures with your friends and you're looking forward to the next adventure and you're pumped up and you're ready for what Wizards is releasing in 2018 and that's the type of gamer that you are, you can see here very quickly that uh oh, i got dogs barking here uh very quickly that fantasy grounds is going to start to become much more cost effective than roll 20. now in addition to that i thought i would go ahead and include everything that fantasy grounds offers and you can see if you add it all up it's 394 dollars 85 however if you go to fantasy grounds they actually offer a bundle where if you pick up everything all at once you get 25 percent off of the sales price now, I also want to throw this in that this does not include sales that they run on Steam, that they that they run uh, seasonally. So I believe they have a summer sale and they have a, a winter sale. So if you pick the bundle up and something comes out during that sale, you will get it for even that further reduced price. And when the next module and the next adventure comes out, it will also be at that reduced price. And you can see that these things, uh, that they do have sales. And let me just show you this real quick. Uh, they do run sales from time to time. Right now, the entire Princes of the Apocalypse campaign, the entire thing is, well, let me move my, let me move my, my head here. Uh, the entire thing is $17.49 for Princes of the Apocalypse. By comparison, Roll20, uh, if you wanted to buy Prince of the Apocalypse, you're looking at $50. Uh, so that is something to consider and one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, let me move my, my head back over here uh, why I wanted to show you guys here on this chart that if you bought everything that Fantasy Grounds offered you'd be looking at $296.14 versus just the stuff available today on Roll20 for $369.64 and you're going to get all of these additional products uh, that are not even available on Roll20, including Xanathards, all the core classes, uh, Out of the Abyss, the, the Skag, all of it. Now, what I have over here for you guys is a few different examples here so that we can look at the just the subscriptions. We're going to throw away the modules for the second and just look at the subscriptions now. So, uh, if you just looking at 24 months, the absolute cheapest way possible, uh, so... For Roll20 to go with the Plus program, you'd be looking at, uh, and those are, excuse me, I got I got an itch. Um, for Roll20, you're paying $50 a year up front. That's the cheapest way possible. I'm not including a pair sent against free. If you guys want completely 100% free and just those free features, it's it's going to be cheaper than uh, than Fantasy Grounds, not based on subs not based on modules or anything like that. Uh, so roll 20 for the plus two years. You're looking at a hundred bucks. That's the absolute cheapest thing that you can get You can't get it any cheaper than that uh, The roll 20 pro the absolute cheapest you can get you can get it any cheaper than that is two hundred dollars 
Fantasy Grounds is a one-time purchase, $150. Uh, so you can see here after the, the 36 month mark, uh, Fantasy Grounds and Roll20 Plus are completely even. Uh, Pro is going to be 200% of what Fantasy Grounds will cost you. Now, if we look at 36 months, the cheapest possible, just the modules available in both Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds. So again, that's just these first eight things. This is what we're comparing here. The Monster Manual down through Tome of Annihilation. We're not including the Core Rulebook, the DMG, Xanathar's Guide, Out of the Abyss, Sword Coast, or uh, Prince of the Apocalypse. Uh, what you're looking at here is, whoops. Uh, what you're looking at here is one-time fee at Fantasy Grounds, the cheapest way possible, $50 a year for Roll20 Plus, $100 a year for Roll20 Pro. The price difference, Fantasy Grounds, $373.91. Roll20 Pro, which is the closest thing to it, $669.61. This is when you start to realize that okay, maybe there is a significant difference in pricing here. Now, I know some of you guys may say, well, Cody, that's nice, uh, but I don't want to pay $150 up front for Fantasy Grounds. No problem. We're going to take a look at that here in just a moment. And then just for kicks, I thought I would throw in everything offered by Fantasy Grounds versus the stuff offered by Roll20. So that's taking this, this number versus this number here. And you can see that uh, over three years, $445 for... 14 products for Fantasy Grounds, and again, $669.61 for just eight products on Roll20 Pro. And again, one thing that you guys need to take note of, this plug and play. Just, you load into Fantasy Grounds, everything is ready to go, everything is smooth, it's built in, your DMG tables are built in, you can do all the things that you're trying to, to do with API, you can do that right here in Fantasy Grounds. You can drop your attacks right on there. You can have them automatically do saves. You can throw everybody in your uh, initiative tracker with one click. All the things that you have to take time to build macros for. Take time to, to build your rollable tables in Roll20. All those things that you need the API for, Fantasy Grounds does right out of the box. Again, Fantasy Grounds UI, not the prettiest thing I've ever seen. It's just not. But does it do the things that Roll20 Pro does? Yes, and then some. The only feature you're missing between this and this package is dynamic lighting. So, subscriptions. Let's say, Cody, you can't afford to pay $150 up front. Let's look at the subscriptions. No problem. Let's take a look at that. So, as you can see, the Fantasy Ground subscription versus the Roll20 Pro subscription, apples to apples, they're identical, exact same pricing. Uh, the Roll20 Plus... You're looking, oh, this is over a two year period, by the way. Uh, it starts to pull away a little bit. Uh, on the 36 months, it's exactly the same. You're just going to keep going. So, this is a $10 a month sub. This is a $10 a month sub. Uh, and then this again is going to continue to pull away as being $5 a month cheaper over that time. So, it's going to be half the price. Now, let's look at the subscriptions plus the apples to apples comparison. So, the same products offered in Roll20 you're going to pick those up in Fantasy Grounds, which means you're not going to get your 25% discount as well. So with that, you're looking at a difference of $584.55 versus $729.28. And something else to consider, look how close the Roll20 Plus is versus the Fantasy Grounds. You're talking, what, less than $40 difference. You're, you're what, $35 difference or so and you have to build all your macros in and you don't have the access to the api you have to spend time a lot of time on this again i showed you guys uh, i know how much time it takes i've got almost 2,000 hours in roll 20. i understand if anybody understands how long it takes to make roll 20 automated like fantasy grounds is it's me uh, so you're spending a lot of time there you got a 30 you got a 35 dollar difference or so and you still have half the features that fantasy grounds has Apples to apples, time aside, more expensive. So this is subscriptions only, and this is everything that you can offer 5e. So again, that's everything here, this column right here versus this column on just subscriptions, $655 versus $729. Far more products, drop in, ready to go right from the jump. And again, this is subscriptions. 
So this is for people that said that they don't want to spend $150 up front, that they just want to subscribe to $10 a month. Now, one last thing, let me kind of slide back over here for the cheapest possible and look at this number. The best thing that you can do is you can go to Fantasy Grounds and pick up Fantasy Grounds. And at the very bottom, when you get ready to buy this, you can see uh, when you get ready to buy, they actually have, and forgive me, I'm, I'm looking for it. It was right in front of me just a moment ago. Uh, but they actually have, let me just try to buy it again. Let's see what it looks like. So they, they actually offer six months, 0% financing on this as well if you qualify for it. So that's the best way to go. Pay your $150 spread out over six months. You're basically doubling up on your fees, right? You're basically doubling up on your subscription and you can power through that very quickly uh, and not have to pay it 100%, $150 chunk at a time. One, zero doubt, that is the best way to go. Spread it out, 0% financing is basically free money. I'm, I'm big into financing, I love that stuff. Uh, so 0% financing is the best way to go and you still get the absolute cheapest way to buy everything. Uh, that is hands down the best thing that you can, you can do whether you're into Roll20 or into Fantasy Grounds, 100% that is the best value available on a virtual tabletop today. All right, so just for fun, I thought I would pick out a couple of different examples because I know that not everybody is going to buy everything. And so I'm going to just kind of take a look at a few different few different options here. These are my personal picks on things that I think that people might be, might be doing and using. Uh, so this is just 2017. All the products that came out in 2017... I'm kind of mixing up here how my approach, I'm going the cheapest way for Roll20 and the cheapest way for Roll20 and buying Fantasy Grounds outright on the Ultimate License. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Dungeons & Dragons Core Rulebook. So I'm going to tack this $30 onto Fantasy Grounds. Roll20 doesn't offer this product. So uh, for them, it's, it's $0. Uh, Tales from the Awning Portal, $29.99. If you wanted to pick up Tales from the Awning Portal uh, for Roll20, it's $50. And so I'm going to also go ahead and add in Tome of Annihilation. Uh, which, whoops, that should definitely be on here. I don't know why that was not on here. My apologies. Uh, so Tome of Annihilation is forty is fifty dollars on Roll Twenty, and it's thirty dollars here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add Xanathar's, which just came out. Again, Roll Twenty doesn't offer Xanathar's, uh, so you can kind of see the price difference here. So if this is kind of how you want to, these are the types of things you want to buy where you want to pick up Roll Twenty Pro. Uh, and you, you picked up Tome of Annihilation and you ran your, your party through all those awesome adventures. Uh, and you picked up t uh, Tales from the Yawning Portal and you ran your party through some of those whenever you guys get bored. You know, you're looking at $200 to do that. Uh, if you wanted to pick up the Core Rulebook and Xanathar's to have all the extra classes, basically, and do the same thing for Fantasy Grounds, uh, you're looking at $268. Now, again, this is just for one year. This is just for one year, uh, for the year of 2017. So let's look down here at this, this next one. And let me see if I can't uh, blow this up a little bit for you guys, make it nice and, and legible. So this is taking 2016 and 2017, plus the core rule book and Fantasy Grounds and the Monster Man and the Monster Manual for both. Again, Fantasy Grounds, I went with a one-time purchase versus two years of the cheapest possible way, buying your year up front. Again, same thing here. Uh, the core rule book is not offered. Uh, Xanathar's is not offered. So you can kind of see here, what I did is this is all the products offered in 2016. So this is Curse of Strahd. Again, I did not include the Curse of Strahd maps uh, from that Roll20 offers for $30. Uh, this is including Storm King's Thunder. This is including Volo's Guide as well, because you know, you probably want to pick up the basically the Monster Manual too. Uh, I think that's nice. Both of these companies offer it, so I thought it was fair to include it in the, uh, in the comparison. And basically, when you, you can look down here at the pricing. So for Fantasy Grounds, we have a total price of $378.92. Roll 20 on the plus subscription, $399.68. Roll 20 on the pro subscription, five, you know, $500. Uh, and then finally, just for kicks, just for kicks to look at Fantasy Grounds versus, well, Cody, I, I just use Roll 20 for free, but I do pick up the modules. Uh, just, to, just for kicks to take a look at this, we have Fantasy Grounds. On a one-time purchase of $150, like normal, Roll20, you're using it for free. And then these are the products offered in Roll20 to date. Again, same number that you saw uh, on the first screen here with just the raw module costs. 
And again here, with a, if you bought everything that Fantasy Grounds offered, you're looking at $445. Uh, so there's a little bit of a price difference there where Roll20 comes out cheaper if you 100% just want to use it for the free, uh, free service. So based on all of this pricing, depending on how much you homebrew versus how much... Uh, how much features you want and how much automation you want and how much how much just jump in and play you don't want to spend a lot of time on prep you can kind of begin to see the differences between roll 20 and fantasy grounds to see which actually is cheapest for you and how you use roll 20 and fantasy grounds or how you use a, a virtual tabletop so the one thing that i would take away from this is if you just want to play for free if you just want to play for free and all you want is the monster manual and maybe Volo's guide, uh, you know, you're looking at a hundred bucks on roll 20. That's not that bad. It's a hundred bucks. Those, those came out, uh, in different years, basically for fantasy grounds, you know, you're going to a minimum, you're going to have the 150. You're probably going to want to pick up the monster manual, Volo's guide, and you're going to want to pick up, uh, the core classes and probably Xanathar's even if you don't pick up the DMG or Skag. So that's gonna end up being a little bit more a little bit more pricey. So just wanna play for free, Roll20 is your best way to go. If you are on the Roll20, let's look at this. If you're on the Roll20 Pro service, you need to get off the Roll20 Pro service. In my opinion, it is by far and away the worst value out of all of it. It's the most expensive and it still takes time, which for me is just an absolute killer to that. I, that's the one thing that just, no, I, I, I just, I really don't like it. If you're using Roll20 for, for homebrew stuff, uh, you're going to come out, you know, it's not going to be as bad. If you are playing all the adventures and you're hyped about playing all the adventures and you want to have uh, the ability to jump in and play Curse of Strahd with your group, no problem, and then you're you're waiting for the release of Wizards next uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast next product, then absolutely, if you are playing all the modules and you're collecting everything and you're, you're, you have your monster manuals and everything like that set up, Fantasy Grounds is the way to go, and honestly, I think it's, it's not even close. So there you guys go. Uh, a plus and minus for both of those, some features for both of those, some pros and cons. I know this video probably turned out a little bit lengthy, but... I think it's a lot better to really go into detail on this stuff before you drop six, seven hundred dollars. Uh, and again, when you start looking at these, when you start looking at my picks here, this is just 2016 and 2017 and the price difference. Fifth edition may be around till 2021. You know, you're really going to start looking at maybe several hundred, I mean, maybe even a thousand dollar difference over that time. Uh, put back into your pocket if you're playing all the adventures and you want all the modules. Uh, so a pretty significant difference. Uh, and every year that you tack onto this, Fantasy Grounds gets cheaper and cheaper versus Roll20, even if you're on the $5 subscription. So uh, there you guys go. I'm sorry it was lengthy. I know it was probably lengthy, but there is an in-depth look at the pricing differences between Fantasy Grounds and Roll20 here at the end of 2017 going into 2018. Hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's something a little bit different than what I've been doing on the channel recently, but I thought it was a good topic. Also guys, before I get out of here, I thought I would show you a, a little bit about the module that we've we've built here. Uh, this is a module that you can find on Drive-Thru RPG if you just want to pick up a PDF. Uh, the PDF version right now on Drive-Thru RPG is, is $1.50. So if you want to support me, uh, you want to check out a module. It's a third level adventure. It's got some fun on kegs in there. Uh, it's available on drive-thru rpg and we also have it built in here to roll 20. so to find it you can just come over here to the marketplace go to browse uh, and then for the author you can put green feather games that's my publishing company uh, you can come right down here click on a much bigger problem on roll 20 it's it's four dollars and 99 cents i get a pretty good cut of that and uh, just to kind of show you guys a little bit this isn't going to blow up massively but we've built the maps in it's completely dynamically lit if you're a subscriber uh, we have some custom tokens. I've modeled them very similar, uh, a little bit to kind of the sim, kind of a similar style to what you guys see on Roll Twenty. Uh, just, just to kind of go along in your collection. Uh, well, there's some NPCs in there that you guys will get will get added. We got a we got a fun gelatinous cube. 
We've got the map, as you guys can see, it's all dynamically lit. And we've got a really fun Onkeg Queen CR5 custom monster uh, in this as well with some fun abilities. I think it's a fun adventure. Uh, it's, again, for, for a third level party. So if you guys want to check that out, if you're looking for an adventure, something to do as a one shot, uh, maybe your game gets canceled for that week and you don't know what to do, consider picking this up. I'd appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, there you guys go. Thanks. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I put out new videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.